What's up guys? So it's been like two days that we haven't picked up the camera. We're going downwind. We're going more towards um, the west. So more towards Colombia and the ABC Islands. We are gonna still be in Los Rockers for a couple of days because the seas are very rough right now. Sanaki, it's a little island. It's very nice, very sandy, with coral reefs around it, I guess. Uh, we have to go and find a little patch of sand where we can drop the anchor and make sure it holds. The land's right there. You can see a change of colors right here. of days it's been like raining non-stop so it was raining this morning as well so we just got a little bit of a window that it wasn't raining as much so we're gonna take advantage and go see the beautiful turtles um we wish we would have stayed here longer and be able to like spend more time here because it seems like it might be really beautiful but the internet here sucks buenos dias Buenos días. ¿Cómo está? Hola. Hola. Hola, niños bonitos. Hola, niños bonitos. Nosotros, Hola, nosotros, nosotros la cuidamos aquí y después la liberamos. Ah, sí, sí. Hola, hijita. ¿Cómo estás? ¿Esto? Hola, cosita preciosa. Esas llegan todas así más pequeñitas. Esas ya tienen tres meses. Ya tienen. Ah, está grande. Tres meses. Esas llegan así, mira. No, al año podemos liberar 400, 500, 600. ¿Y por qué está en peligro de extinción? ¿Por qué? Porque de ahí saca, mira, zarcillo, cintillo, anillo, pulsera, la espuela para la pelea de gallo, la uña para tocar la guitarra y la montura de los lentes lo sacan de este caparazón. Esta es la tortuga verde o tortuga blanca. Sí. Esta es la famosa Carey. Esto es Caguama. Ya cuando están adultas, si tienes muchas en un tanque, también tienden a atacarse entre ellas, siendo de la misma especie. El ciclo natural de mil tortuguillos que nacen, de uno a tres, llegan a vida adulta. Imagínate si claro, ese es el propósito claro, de traerlas acá, interviniendo la mano del hombre. So just to recap what uh, they just told us, this is a foundation. They grab the baby turtles from the islands and just bring them here so that they increase their odds of survival because um, the birds will eat them when they're babies or when they have the eggs, they will eat them and obviously they won't survive. Many of these turtles are in at risk of extinction. It just makes me really, really emotional to kind of share with you guys all this information because I know like you're not seeing this you know when we lived in an urban area like Miami we had no idea of everything that was going on in the ocean after we started living on the boat we started seeing like all of the things that actually happen in the ocean that were actually um, impacting in such a strong way all of the species here of turtles they have four species here in Los Roques and all four are about to reach extinction the reason why is because humans we eat them actually use the shells of the turtles to make things like earrings like bracelets jewelry they make brushes for you to brush your hair they make um, like for you to play the guitar the little pin to play the guitar so it's just really bad because by using this animal we're almost reaching extinction unfortunately this is not the only animal that is at risk of extinction i have already shared with you guys in the past how so many sharks um you know i posted in a previous video about not buying things like jewelry like the um shark tooth because even though they may say that they eat them if we continue buying this kind of items you know there's the supply demand thing if we 
do the demand if we continue to buy these things it provides a demand for people that are going to kill the turtles that are going to kill the sharks that are going to kill the whales for them to continue hunting these animals and continue killing them until the point that they actually reach extinction things i forgot to mention to you guys is that one of the reasons why this animals reach extinction is because for instance for this turtles for every 1000 turtles that are born only one makes it to adulthood because you know as their babies when they go to the when they're going to shore they break the egg they're going to shore and they're gonna start swimming all the fish all the birds they know when the turtles are going to be born well when they're going to break the, the egg and break the shell. They know when they're going to be born. So they're waiting, they're waiting just to start eating and start hunting. When they're babies, when they're born, they're actually very soft. Um, when they're born, they're only like 12 grams. That's how small and tiny they are. And then on top of that, we're killing them. We're killing humans, we're killing all those turtles that take, um, they actually start reproducing until they're 20, 18 or 20 years old. That means that it takes them 20 years. So we kill a turtle that is already two or three years old or four years old. You saw those turtles that we saw over there. They were only two years old, the biggest ones, and they won't uh, reproduce until they're 20. So we have already killed them at two years old. There's no way that we can get these animals to catch up to how many we are actually consuming. Them. So what they're looking at right now is that is the water pump there it actually stopped working a couple of days ago it stopped working it seems like because of the impeller um, and because it stopped working the turtles can't have like enough water to bring it all the way back up so they're having to like just bring jars to the turtles and to fill their tanks which is you know exhausting for them and also not the best for the turtles so Ali was just asking them if there's any way that he can like bring an impeller or fix it but they haven't been able to just remove the part at all there's a seal in the shaft that's broken because they used it to pump uh, gas gas so the gas burns the rubber of the seal and now it doesn't pump because all the water is escaping through that seal so we're trying to open it but there's a bad bolt here yeah oh So anyway, so I'm going to the boat, going to get some tools so Alejo can hopefully fix this. Um, we were hoping to leave really fast because I really needed to work and I needed internet. But once we leave, we're probably not gonna come back. And we really want these guys to fix the, um, the pump because if they don't fix the pump, it means that they don't have the, the budget here to be able to buy another one. So it is already 2.30 p.m. We arrived here at around at around 11 a.m. So it's been a couple of hours since we started trying to fix the, the, the water pump. The reason why we were helping, well not me, I really wasn't doing much, but why Alejo was helping them fix the water pump is because they have been doing this manually. Manually means that they have to carry um, 40 times Five, gallon wa um, five gallons of water from the ocean to these pools 40 times twice a day. That means they have to do this run 80 times. These guys are almost 60 years old. It's exhausting. I, I'm 29 and I would freaking be drained if you asked me to do this. Obviously, the turtles, because the water is so low, um, it gets sturdier faster because the water needs to be changed twice a day and because they have no water pump they have to put more turtles in one pool than they would than they would they're supposed to be the number of turtles in one pool you can see here there's a lot of turtles in this one um, and there's not supposed to be that many and it's a little dirty now that we have hopefully fixed it we can't test it yet because the seals have to dry up like the, the glue that we put around it has well i keep saying it, but it's a little that Alejo put around it has to dry up. Obviously the reason why they weren't able to fix it is because first they don't have much diesel 
machinery experience. Like, but most importantly, they don't have any resources here. These guys don't get anything. They're literally in the middle of this island. I'll record around it, but there's nothing here. Like nothing at all here. Um, they get paid three dollars every single month. They get one chicken for three people for one a month, plus um, like a kilogram of meat, and that's all they get. And they don't get anyone that comes here. So it's like we had to bring all the tools that Alejo has in the boat just to be able to fix it. So one of the things that I wanted to also tell you guys is that this place, before the whole situation with Venezuela happened, it was actually a private entity that was running this foundation. They had marine biologists, archaeologists, they had a lab. They had all these amazing things. And once um, Maduro, the president of Venezuela, started Venezuela basically took over this place completely the people that were running it the private entity it, they were they disappeared this now belongs to the government um, and they obviously just basically steal all the money and they don't care about bringing any funds here so these guys are basically running these things with the nails like they don't have any resources anything at all they don't they didn't have electricity they um, you know, someone actually just donated a, a generator for them to be able to have electricity, but they didn't have it before. This thing, the, the water pump stopped working. They have been asking for it for over two weeks and the government obviously hasn't sent anything to them. Um, so they're struggling, they're struggling big time. So we are back on the boat after hours and hours of just being there trying to fix the, that thing, the water pump. <laughs> Tell me your thoughts. So, our idea was to come really early to go see the turtles and just leave to another island that we have better signal because we need to work. But once we arrived, I was asking the guys like, why are you carrying buckets of water? Because I saw them yesterday in the afternoon carrying buckets of water from the sea. And the guy was our water pump like it died and it's not working so i asked the guy to see if i could see it and then what was wrong with it he had a leak like in the shaft and i told him i had a seal from from our cell drives yeah. that we can just try to put like a seal and just see if it works see if it works so at least pump at least some kind of water, like just a little bit. Yeah. And it took us hours to get that thing open because first it's super rusty, like super rusty. And yeah, we got it open. We took it apart. We took out the seals. We put the new seal in. And I don't know, because the seal that I had is an oil seal. Yeah. They're gonna make it work for water and it was used but I mean at least if it has some kind of pressure kind of, it might leak but it's not gonna leak a lot of water they had already tried to open that thing they had already tried to fix it before like and they had not been able to accomplish much because like I said before they didn't have the resources like any of the tools that obviously we carry because everything on the boat breaks so here mister you have learned a lot baby a lot. A lot do, you feel, do you feel happy that you were able to help them? I don't know, because if it works, yes, I'm gonna be happy. If it doesn't work, no, I'm not gonna be happy. We were really working like nonstop, just trying to, oh my God, we don't have any internet, we need to work. On our and then as we got there, we see this like completely different reality from these guys that they have barely any electricity, barely any water. They get how many liters of water per month? 120. 220. 220 liters of water per month. That's what they eat with, shower with, do everything with. They're pretty like they're pretty screwed. They have to just go in the ocean and shower in the ocean. And, like, and we're th here thinking like, how are we gonna do this thing for the, our business, for our website, for whatever. Like our reality is so completely different from theirs and it just felt wrong just to like leave and not be able to try to help these guys in any way that we could. Fortunately, we had, you know, bought some groceries, you know, when, if you guys saw our first videos when we were provisioning, we bought stuff. We had not given it to too many people because we had not seen the need anywhere. So we're giving it to these guys and 
<sighs> I don't know. It just makes you like analyze and and see the different realities that someone in the world is living compared to ours. Like, you know, what is really a problem? For us, a problem is like our website is down or like something that is not working, a button, a click or something. And for them, a problem is like not having food, not having water, not having electricity, like doing all this work in the middle of nowhere, not having, barely they have any cell phone signal here. Yeah, it's very tough out here. They barely have any tools, which is incredible. Um, and the guys were functioning radio. And yeah, their radio, they, I mean, if they have an emergency, they don't have any way to communicate with other people. So, so yeah, that's tough. And they were telling because they do like one month shift. So they come one month, they leave one month, they come one month. And it looks like people from other shifts because sometimes they hire new people and they, those people uh, quit that same month. Uh, they're stealing the stuff, like the tools, their, I don't know, just basic things. They steal them from here, so when they come back, they barely have anything. So that's pretty bad. And, and their government doesn't give them anything. And their government pays them $3 a month. $3 a month. Like, what do you do with $3? So, <laughs> and plus they get a bonus of $1.20 because they're not in mainland. So that's pretty bad. They're also telling these people that their tips, that they get tips here, that they can keep the tips for themselves, that they must give the tips to the government. So that's pretty bad too. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of bad things that occur he here that we don't see unless we speak to the native people and the people that are working in these locations. So we are heading back to the turtles. We just had lunch, had a nice pasta. Now we are going to head to the turtles to see if the water pump is now actually working. How sure are you that it's gonna work? We are about 80% sure that it's gonna work. Okay. Well, this is extremely disappointing. After spending the entire day here and trying to fix the water pump, it did not work. Um, the water is still leaking, which sucks because we really wanted to make it work. It's really, really hot. And then having to just carry all these jugs of, of water. So, but they're extremely positive. So now Alejo is going to see if he ha we have an extra pump on the boat, if we leave them that extra pump. We have to figure out how to bring like a massive hose from the ocean to here. Although turtles eat seagrams in the wild, they fed them sardines at the nonprofit as they provide all the nutrients needed for them to grow healthy. We try to find a solution to connect the bilge pump that Alejo was planning on leaving them, but they didn't have any functioning batteries. Everything was old and had been left without maintenance for years. As we mentioned, the guys were leaving at this remote island with the bare minimum. 
They had a simple kitchen to cook their meals in using the very few items that they received every month. It was not hard to understand why they didn't have a functioning battery or why they had been living without energy for such a long time. We are going to test the bilge pump that Alejo brought here. Um, see if it works. The only way to get energy for it is a 12 volt bilge pump. Uh, we're gonna try from the generator if it works. Hopefully it does. You really want to help them out, right? Yo <laughs> también. I know. La ponemos allí, ¿verdad? Sí. Sí. Este, claro, necesitaríamos igual extensión para poder meter la planta en el agua. Claro. We were really, really crushed when the thing didn't work, especially because we spent so many hours trying to fix it. Hopefully we try to get it working. Hopefully, I mean, the thing that we know for a fact is that if we don't help them out, nobody's gonna come and help them out. And they're just gonna be, they're just gonna continue struggling here. So that's why it's our mission to really, really help these guys, get them the water that they need, make their life a little bit easier. And actually it makes them, their life a lot easier. Um, so they're just trying to get as much PVC pipes as they can from the lab, what used to be a lab. One of the guys was like all negative. Negative. Like he's like that battery's not gonna work. That pump is not gonna work. That he was saying that nothing that we were trying was gonna work. And then I go, I connect the pump, the, like the bilge pump to a generator. He has like a 12 volt. I just put it in the bucket. And that thing is like, it's like, okay, we're gonna do it. Right now. <laughs> it was so funny because literally. When he saw the water coming out, that guy was like positive, man. He was just like, let's do it right now. Focus, focus, telling the other guy. But focus, let's just put this together. You get this. <laughs> bueno, Elio, ¿cómo está la actitud? Positiva, positiva. <laughs> Eso. When we were just connecting, like, the pump. Yeah. And that thing started dripping like their The big thing that we were connecting right here. Like their faces changed all of a sudden. Yeah. They were happy before and then they're like shit, we have to carry more buckets. Yeah, they were super sad. You could uh, tell by their faces. Yeah. And they don't have the tools to do it again. Yeah. The guy was telling the other guy, not telling me, but I know that they don't have the tools and I heard them. So yeah, it's like shit. Like what should I do? Should I just leave and leave it? just give it another try with another something that's working but we just yeah. gotta figure out how to take the water from the ocean to the turtles yeah okay so we already have a big massive pvc pipe slash with connected with like hoses and pieces of pvc pipes going on um es como dicen el fracaso es un aprendizaje más de lo que hay o lo que no hay que hacer in the last steps of figuring this out we have the electricity cable which is going to go to the generator they are taking the generator out and we have the pump here this is a bilge pump. This is what saves boats from from sinking. Ah, 
ahora. Claro, ya ella conectada ahí. So Alejo is trying to find which cable is the positive and negative because since he marked them both, we don't know which one it is. We have already connected the long um, pipeline that we created from here all the way back there. We have connected the pipeline to the actual bilge pump and all we're waiting for is to connect the bilge pump to the generator so you can start pumping water. So where we're at right now is Alejo and Edgar. They are just checking the entire cable just to make sure there's no rips. Putting some tape around the tips just so that because we're dealing with water obviously. And then we have Elio in the back. He's just as excited as you can see a human being uh, just waiting for the water to come out of that hose. And Andrea, she's here recording the mission live from La Roques, Venezuela. Ah. So we have connected the build pump to the generator. But then the water was leaking through the connection between the bilge pump and the pipeline. Yeah, we're like almost there. See, sí. sale. Yep, water. Pero ahí está saliendo bien. Got water? Yes, we're flowing water, but we still need to flow. All the leak just. What is progress? You see the water there? It's filling up. No, me No, no tiene para cortar. Sí, claro. No, qué bueno, me alegra que se haya encontrado una solución. Lentejitas, arroz, aceite, eh, ajá, arroz, harina, aceite, lentejitas. Sí, qué bueno. Claro. So guys, we made it back on board Hakuna and today was just a great story to remember for a really long time. Just a, an overall really inspiring and great story and just super happy that we were able to help these guys like insane. The guys and the turtles. And the turtles, yeah. Thank I know, you. we were there the entire, the entire day, literally. From 10 a.m. It's about to be 8 p.m. So we're really, really tired, our feet hurt. We were trying the impossible today, like just, well not the impossible. The impossible considering the resources, <laughs> kind of, right? Because we had whatever we had on the boat, these guys, you know, they live in the middle of nowhere. They don't get anything from anyone. They don't even have a radio to communicate. If something happens to these guys, like, you know, how would they go out there? They don't even have a boat. They don't have a, I don't know. They don't have anything. So it's just, you know, it just changes your perspective completely on what's really important in life and what really matters. And we thought these people here have it all. These people in Los Roques, they have literally everything. Like why, you know, why is it, why is it that people say that they don't have anything? Well, there's two sides of the coin. The people that come here to travel are the people that have a lot, a lot of money in Venezuela, which are probably the people that are either like business owners, most likely connected with the government, most likely connected with uh, drug dealing or the people that are in the government which are like super corrupt and that are stealing all the money from the people of the like from it's from venezuela citizens these guys they are the example of what is going on in venezuela that they're getting paid three dollars per month which is insane like what do you do with three dollars and they're getting their 
butt kicked just every single day with the sun and the work and the amount of things that they have to do and then on top of that they have the president of the foundation which is obviously someone as corrupt with the government that is connected to the government and that's why he's in that position and these guys don't even want to get them a water pump they've been asking for it for over two weeks and they don't even want to get them a water pump just because they're thinking like oh um no like you know do, do whatever you have to do like even if it involves you doing 80 times walking up and down with buckets and like just they could just free the turtles and just leave seriously like but they wouldn't they they only care about the money yep. the guy that is the president of the foundation fundamar what they're what he's doing is basically he charges undercover he doesn't like you know nobody knows this but the guys told us like he charges forty dollars for releasing each turtle and that's money that he's putting in his pocket behind the the government but they don't do anything they don't look for sponsorship from business they don't look for they don't actually want these people to keep to keep the tips or like to keep a part of the tips they don't want these guys to keep anything even though there's the ones here that are living in an isolated island in the middle of nowhere barely any food barely any water barely anything at all like their needs are not even covered so, i mean we we can't just buy a brand new thing for these people because that's not our job to buy them anything and they're gonna take it away from them anyways and they're if, gonna take if it we, away if we or, buy anything from or, them or, they're gonna take like it away the guy said when they get things for free they, like the people that come to the island they don't take care of it and they just trash it so so i think we just did our part they're gonna use our temporary fix yeah. but it is what it is people shady cover you know yeah that's what it is and Keep in mind, they get paid three dollars a month, but they get the food for free. But it's not like they get a lot of food. They get one chicken for 15 days for three people. Today was like a huge lesson on humanity, on not giving up, on seeing the positive side of life, on realizing that what you think is like a problem in your life, you have no idea what is really someone else's problem. So anyway, that's the story for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. Good night.